Well, what's up there, guys? Brian Hoodie, three topics game here. Share if you know one of my newest game reviews. This time, I'll be sharing you my thoughts on a recently released Hogwarts Legacy, which is not only become incredibly popular online, but uh, it was one of my most anticipated games of this year. And at the time of this recording, I can say that though I have not actually finished beating the main campaign of this story, I have played through about 20 hours of this game, and I did happen to look ahead to kind of see how the game ends. Uh, I don't think I spoiled too much. Uh, and I think I have enough of, a, of an idea of my thoughts on this game to give a pretty accurate review. So if you haven't enjoyed this review by the end, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to check me on my future videos. Now, for wasting any more time, let's jump into my initial thoughts, starting off with the game story. So let's go with uh, starting now. The primary story for Hogwarts Legacy has you take control of a new student who is entering Hogwarts for the first time going in as a fifth year. As you travel to Hogwarts with one of your future professors, you then find yourself being attacked by a dragon, which then causes you to teleport to a secret location. As you explore the secret location, you then discover that your character actually has the ability to access ancient magics that no one else can. Upon this new revelation, you then find yourself in the middle of a new conflict that has a dangerous new goblin rebellion teaming up with a pair of dark wizards, and their objective is to capture you and use your ancient abilities to gain access to some legendary magic, thereby making them even more dangerous. Now, as you progress through the game, you will have to focus on your classes and learning more, more about your students and certain events that happen around the castle, along with these small little towns that are actually connected to the surrounding environment. But your primary objective is to understand exactly what this Goblin Rebellion is up to, what the Dark Wizards and Witches want with you, and to find a way to stop them from getting access to this new power and hopefully save the day. Now, as someone, when it comes to... RPGs in general, story is absolutely key here. And I can flat out tell you that the main story, the main focal point for Hogwarts Legacy is not perfect. There is a lot of plot holes. There are a lot of things in this story that aren't making sense. There are a lot of frustrations with some of the characters by not giving you information sooner than later that actually would have been very helpful if we had known some of this information sooner in the game. There are some characters that I don't give, don't think are given a much screen time. There's some characters that I just don't think we are spending enough time with for them to make a real impact on the main story direction. There's some characters that are just kind of thrown in here that are thrown in the plot that don't need to be there. So overall, while I think that the story for Hogwarts Legacy is very, very serviceable, I just don't think it's particularly one of the stronger elements. It it's it's fine at getting the job done. It's fine for getting the plot moving and giving you a purpose for why you were doing what you were doing. But I just think that with a little more time, they could have thinned out this plot. There's just a lot of elements about this story that just don't add to the primary direction for which we need to be going. And there's just so many things to do. There's so many things that can sidetrack you. And a lot of these things don't even really add up to the primary focus of this story. They're just their own little things. And don't get me wrong, side stories are great. And they allow you to get to know more about not only individuals that may not be connected to the main story, but to get you to know more a little bit about the world. But I think that, there, that this game really would have benefited from having side stories or even primary stories that are actually just a little bit more focused than that for you actually benefit from learning more from the pride from the main story that kind of make the ending feel a little bit more satisfying i mean i thought the ending was fine and it was pretty standard whether you pick the bad ending or the good ending um it made sense for the story to go in the direction that it went but i just think that there's just a number of elements that i just don't really think added much to the overall side and we're just throwing it to make the game longer than I felt it was probably going to end up being by the time I'm done with this game's main plot. Now, the gameplay style for Hogwarts Legacy serves as an open world RPG with expansive elements to both its combat and exploration elements. Now, the first thing that I really have to mention is the character customization, and I must say that without a doubt, Hogwarts Legacy has the single most impressive character customization system that I've ever seen for any game. It is absolutely mind-blowing just how much you can customize your character to be just however way you want it to be. You can change your look, appearance, your gender, you can even choose the tone of voice that your character can have in terms of the speed in which they talk. I mean, just this amount of detail in your character is just so impressive that heck, you can actually make a character that looks pretty identical to yourself. Now, when it comes to the exploration element, there is a lot of things to explore, and not only the castle of Hogwarts, but the surrounding areas in general. There are so many things to do. 
And once you actually get access to the ability to fly on your broom or get the ability to start riding mounts, you can pretty much explore any element of this map. And this map is massive. You can also take part in all sorts of different environments and activities that I really wasn't expecting. You can take part in certain races in order to get better customizations for your broom. You can take part in this little game called Summoner's Court by using certain spells. You can buy all sorts of things, including materials to make certain potions or, you know, certain plants. Or you can upgrade certain clothes or buy certain perks. You can even interact with certain animals and capture some certain animals and then take care of them. And if you take care of these animals, you actually gain access to certain exclusive materials materials that you can then use to upgrade your clothes and even your weapons and even some of your spells. Now as you progress through the game, you will eventually find yourself getting access to the Room of Requirement, and this kind of serves as a primary hub area for your character. Now in this room, this is where you can actually gain access to uncovering certain mysterious gear that you pick up, or you can craft certain potions or even grow certain plants over a certain amount of time. Now, as you explore through Hogwarts and the surrounding areas across the map, you will have access to actually talk to several individuals and have certain dialogue sections. However, one thing that I think is a little bit flawed about the dialogue sections is that there isn't a morality system. As you talk to certain people, you really get access to one of two different dialogue sections. You can either have a positive response and a negative response. And depending on which you know dialogue you pick, it doesn't really have a major impact on how people view your character. And I think that a morality system really would have gone a long way to actually having certain characters react to you in certain ways depending on your responses or your current actions. And I think a morality system actually would have benefited in really one of the more serious elements of the compass system, which I'll explain in a little bit. Now, outside of the main missions that you will have to take part in for the primary story, you can take part in a wide variety of different side missions. And holy cow, there are so many side missions that it, it's almost unavoidable that you'll end up doing some of them as you explore throughout the game. Now, the side missions can actually have a wide variety of different objectives when it comes to just clearing out certain enemies in a certain area or trying to find what happened to a certain individual who belonged to this small little town or maybe you want to collect some broom data so that a certain individual in Hogsmeade can actually grant you access to certain upgrades for your broom that allow you to you know control your broom a little bit better in certain situations now when it comes to the combat system this too is also greatly expansive the farther you play throughout the game there's a wide variety of different enemy varieties that will have you needing to use different approaches in order to take them down properly now as you progress through the game you'll also gain access to a wide collection of spells that actually have different effects on certain enemies and there are even some enemies that can actually put up certain shields that require certain spells in order to puncture them in order for you to actually focus on your basic spell attacks and then as you grow throughout the game you actually can then start linking and using certain combos with different spells in order to cause the maximum amount of damage however i will say this that the combat isn't exactly perfect as the targeting system is very much based on the direction of your camera and this can cause certain issues in certain situations which i will talk about later on in the video now when you look at all these different elements of the gameplay they didn't really do anything revolutionary if you've played enough rpgs you've seen a lot of these elements but they handle them incredibly well when it comes to the combat exploration puzzles just leveling up systems just any, like anything you can expect in an rpg it's here it's handled pretty well you've seen it in other games before but i think to see it actually function as well in the wizarding world i thought was a major major plus now i think that one of the strong one of the weaker elements that i thought was having some trouble with is in some of the combat sequences now i think that combat works as i stated earlier incredibly well i just think that where it doesn't really work all that well is in tight small areas where you're dealing with multiple enemies because when you're in these areas it's kind of hard to move the camera around and target specific targets now because that there are certain enemies that can only be hit first you have to disable their shields using certain spells if there's so many and they're so cluttered together it makes it hard to try to focus on any one target and this can cause many problems uh, which includes you know using a certain spell and it hitting a target that you weren't supposed to be aiming for but because the targeting system is focused on the direction of your camera that can make again fighting in tight controlled areas with multiple enemies very very difficult and in some cases that is where the game got the most hardest even on medium difficulty and if it could be that difficult on just medium difficulty i can't even imagine how much harder some of these sections would have been on the hardest difficulty now i was playing this game on the playstation 5 and it ran incredibly well 
visuals, it was great. I ran into no real, you know, frame rate issues, and I did have performance mode on, which is what I've heard is probably the best setting when you're playing this game. However, there were a few issues that I, I, I ran into, especially with some of the physics of the game. Uh, I ran into this one little glitch where, um, for whatever reason, after Sebastian walked through a door, his cloak got stuck through his body and it looked like he was wearing a dress. There were several missions where the character just wouldn't show up at a certain point. And so I think that uh, 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 there's there's a few slight technical errors, I think, that with an, with an extra patch or two could have smoothened out uh, you know some of these issues despite the fact that I was playing on PlayStation 5 so I don't know how it will play on other systems but that just kind of shows that as well polished as this game is there's still a few just issues that can kind of hinder your little overall experience but I don't think that'll hurt it in the long run now overall I can say this without question this is by far the best game involved in the wizarding world to date ever this is the most fun that i've actually had with wizarding world in general since seeing the last harry potter film when it was originally released in theaters so if you are a fan of harry potter or the wizarding world in general and you liked your rpgs this is an absolutely a must buy game but i would just kind of just hesitate that you might run into a few issues that make this might make this game a little bit less than perfect. So overall, if I had to give Hogwarts Legacy my own personal ranking, I think the highest that I could give it is an 8.5. Still a great game, a must-own title for anyone who's a fan of RPGs or Harry Potter or the Wizarding World in general, or someone who's just curious to learn more about the world. Trust me, this game will allow you to see parts of this world that we've never even got a chance to see in any of the books or films. And because of that, this is certainly something that I'm glad I picked up when I did. So those are my thoughts on Hogwarts Legacy. Now, if you happen to play this game, what are your guys' thoughts? Share your thoughts with me and everyone in the comments down below. And like always, thank you guys for watching. You're awesome. And I'll catch you all guys next time.